The streaming wars are over, and Netflix has finally found its niche, scam movies. Netflix has made a profit off of making scams entertaining by reenacting infamous scams and turning it into a movie. From smaller scams like the Tinder swindler to the high-end fraud of Fire Festival, it seems no scam is safe from Netflix's grubby hands. Except uh, maybe their own? In this video, we'll be going over the scam that drained Netflix a little over $50 million. Stick around until the end of the video to see why they're keeping quiet about it. Directing Chops Before we get any action, we first have to set the lights and cameras on director Carl Wrench. Carl was an ambitious director with a filmmaking brain way, way, way ahead of its time. That's because he loved science fiction, and it definitely showed in his work. Multiple early commercial projects with different companies that involved futuristic robots were more than enough proof that Carl loved his robots but his filmmaking career wouldn't land him on the map until 2010. Carl Rinch's short film The Gift won multiple awards at the Cannes Lions International Advertising Festival, and this caught some people's attention. After a few more stints of being a cybernetic commercial director, he would finally get his directorial debut. Universal Pictures saw his science fiction work and decided, hey, let's give him a movie set in feudal Japan. And better yet, let's have it star famous Caucasian man Keanu Reeves. From the get-go, this was a recipe for disaster. Not only was the movie terribly received by critics, but it also bombed at the box office. This was obviously not a good look for Mr. Rinch his directorial career, but many people gave him the benefit of the doubt. A director that had a science fiction niche should never have gotten close to a feudal Japan script anyways, and the script itself simply could not be saved. While the directorial criticisms did hurt, Carl was far from discouraged. In fact, he continued directing commercials in his own sci-fi style. What other people don't know is that in between commercial jobs, Carl Wrench was already giving shape to his freaky mind in the form of an actual self-written script. Streaming War the year is 2020, and the world is standing still. COVID has blindsided our economy, forcing us to stay in our homes and leaving us with no other choice but to make sourdough starters, learn TikTok dances, and of course, binge watch. Netflix used to be the pinnacle of what it meant to be an on-demand streaming service, but now that dominance is slowly disappearing. Companies like Amazon and Apple have started their own streaming services, and it's now an all-out war on who had the bigger IPs. HBO has has Game of Thrones, Amazon has The Boys, and Netflix has Stranger Things. While these may be successful, their success isn't permanent, and each streaming service is constantly looking for the next big thing. Enter Carl Wrench. Carl Wrench had been brewing up a sci-fi TV series that was perfect for his vision. The show, entitled White Horse, revolved around synthetic human beings created by humanity that slowly turned on humanity. The script was great, and the few 10-minute pilot episodes Carl shot as proof of concept captivated a lot of streaming sites, especially Jeff Bezos, the man who spent billions of dollars creating a giant clock. And if Bezos wanted in, then Netflix wanted in first. The first bid by Jeff Bezos started an all-out bidding war between streaming services, each one sweetening the pot just a bit more until Netflix offered the most preposterous production deal, a deal that Netflix was stupid enough to offer and Carl not stupid enough to turn down, guaranteeing a cinematic universe in the palm of his hands if the show was a smash hit. This alone would have saved the Star Wars franchise, but the pot gets even sweeter. Netflix, shockingly enough, gave final cut rights to Carl. This meant that Netflix in any way could not interfere with the final product of the project. This was enough to convince Carl to stay with Netflix, and Netflix was more than happy to hand $50 million to Carl and let him run around doing whatever he wants. Boy, was that a mistake. Conquest what was once a show entitled White Horse is now a show entitled Conquest, one of the many changes that the show would undergo under the erratic eye of Carl Wrench. And in the beginning, the series itself was looking promising. Great set design and character costumes designed by Carl Wrench's wife, Gabriella Bentoncourt, were some of the standouts from the screenshots that managed to find its way out to the internet. But then came the union letter. A union representative on the set of Conquest wrote a letter to Netflix's offices, claiming that Carl was a bit too abrasive on set, 
Netflix was quick to act on this, approaching Carl immediately and demanding an explanation for his behavior. Carl seemed receptive at first, aware of his behavior and promising to be kinder, but things would only get worse. New rumors of Carl on set, sleepless and paranoid. At one point, he even started shouting at his wife, accusing her of plotting his own assassination. This level of mania reached its peak when Carl wrote an email to Netflix executives claiming that 1. He had discovered a secret transmission mechanism that was causing the COVID virus worldwide, and 2. He can now predict lightning strikes. But to Netflix, this was simply the mind of an artist at work. Every artist gets a little crazy sometimes, right? That's where all the good art is made. Carl was crazy enough to predict lightning and selfish enough to call up Netflix asking for more money. After missing multiple deadlines with no progress to show for it, Carl came to Netflix groveling for some more money. Netflix was understandably hesitant at first, but Carl Wrench claimed that if he didn't get the money, the production would collapse in on itself and the series would be doomed. Afraid to have their initial investment get thrown in the trash, Netflix wired him an additional $11 million. Finally, with that money, the production won't collapse, right? The production collapses. As soon as Carl received the $11 million, he did what any sensible man would do. Instead of putting the production money into actual production of his show, he took the money and wired it to his own stock investment account, where he made high-risk trades and calls that lost him a little over $6 million. And that's just what happened in a week. It was clear that Carl was out of control. Netflix knew it, and even his wife knew it. Gabriella filed for a divorce soon after the manic episode started, and Netflix knew that the show was already a lost cause. Carl tried to convince Netflix to hire him back, ensuring him that, yes, he can really find the source of the coronavirus signal and save us all. Netflix cut his funding on March 18, 2021. Down on his luck with only $4 million, he made the smart decision and invested all of it on crypto. And for some miraculous reason, it worked. Scam Scum Rinch invested his money in crypto and went to the moon with it, turning his $4 million into 27 mil uh, practically in just a few weeks. And if you thought he would be smart about his money this time, you would be wrong. Instead of investing to jumpstart his career again with his newfound funding, he instead chooses to buy luxury upon luxury. Five Rolls Royces, a Ferrari, and a $400,000 watch were just some of the pieces he flexed when he won big in the crypto market, all of which he desperately claimed were going to be used as props in the movie to prevent his wife from taking anything in the divorce, a sly trick that was easily proven false by their divorce lawyer. Netflix bit off more than they could chew in pursuit of finding their next big show, and ended up being drained of more than $50 million, a number that might grow even larger depending on Carl's lawsuit against Netflix. That's right, Carl Wrench even had the gall to counter-sue Netflix claiming that they owe him an additional $14 million for the production of his show, a show which is non-existent, uh, so this may be a quick trial. Regardless of the outcome of the trial, we can only hope that Carl Wrench eventually does find and dismantle the COVID signal transmitter. Maybe he could even make a movie out of it.